Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to construct a distance time graph from given information. You should then be able to determine an object's speed from a distance time graph. And if you are a higher tier student, then you should be able to use a tangent to determine the speed of an accelerating object. In the last couple of videos we've been looking at how objects move, we've learned how to calculate speed, and we've seen the difference between speed and velocity. Now one key fact is that if an object moves along a straight line, then the distance travelled can be represented by a distance time graph, and we're looking at those in this video. This shows a description of a journey. A person walked 100 metres in a straight line in 100 seconds. They then stopped for 40 seconds, and then walked another 70 metres in 50 seconds. So we're going to represent this journey on a distance time graph. Here are the axes. We have distance on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. We start by placing a point at 0 seconds and 0 metres. This represents the person before they started walking. Now we place a dot at 100 metres and 100 seconds. This represents the first part of the journey. The person now stopped for 40 seconds, so to show this we place a dot 40 seconds further along the time axis, but at the same distance as before, in other words 100 metres. In the last part of the journey the person walked another 70 metres in 50 seconds, so to show this we place a dot 70 metres further up the distance axis, and 50 seconds further along the time axis like this. And finally we connect the dots with straight lines. So this is the distance time graph for the journey. Here's one for you to try. A person walks in a straight line 60 metres in 80 seconds. They then walk a further 110 metres in 70 seconds. I'd like you to plot a distance time graph for this journey. So pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, we start by placing a dot at 0 metres and 0 seconds. We then place a dot at 60 metres and 80 seconds, and this represents the first part of the journey. Now we place a dot 110 metres further along the distance axis, and 70 seconds further along the time axis, like this. This represents the second part of the journey. And finally we connect the dots with lines. Now the gradient of a distance time graph tells us the object's speed. In the exam you could be shown a distance time graph and asked to calculate the speed. So I'm showing you a distance time graph here and as you can see there are two parts to this journey. We're going to use the gradient to work out the speed for both parts. To calculate the gradient we divide the distance travelled by the time taken. Looking at the first part of the graph, the distance travelled is 120 metres and the time taken is 60 seconds. Dividing 120 by 60 gives us a speed of 2 metres per second. Looking at the second part of the graph, the distance travelled is 40 metres and the time taken is 130 seconds. Dividing 40 by 130 gives us a speed of 0.3 metres per second to one decimal place. Now if you're a foundation tier student then you can stop watching now, but if you're a higher tier student then you need to continue. Take a look at this distance time graph. As you can see the line is an upward sloping curve. This tells us that the object is constantly increasing in speed, in other words it's accelerating. So how do we determine the speed of this object at any given point? Imagine that we wanted to know the speed of the object at 100 seconds. To do that we place a dot on the line at 100 seconds like this. We then draw a tangent to the line. The tangent should be as large as we can make it. Next we work out the gradient of the line just like we did before. So in this case the distance travelled is 140 metres, and the time taken is 80 seconds. Dividing 140 by 80 gives us a speed at this point of 1.75 metres per second. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on distance time graphs in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. 